please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, it really does mean a lot, thank you. The subject of this story is a much beloved, seldom understood local character who left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of the people of Kidderminster. In the following passages I will attempt to summarise a selection of some of the many stories and anecdotes which I hope will bring back a few fond memories and raise a smile or two. Once I have recalled these tales of mischief and mayhem I will present some of the facts of a man's life, shared here for the first time with special thanks to his family who have very kindly furnished me with the information to allow me to give a more balanced picture of the enigma that is Johnny the Cobbler. Johnny the Cobbler was an eccentric, a man who seemingly loved to cause mischief and make people laugh. Often he could be seen around town, either dressed in a sailor's outfit or as Charlie Chaplin, complete with bowler hat and cane, usually playing the fool. You might catch him saluting lampposts or whistling at passers-by, but when the people turned round to see where the sound had come from, Johnny would be looking innocently in the opposite direction. Children would regularly see him on their way home from school, either on his rally grifter bike or pushing a pram full of empty bottles. Sometimes even the local police constables struggled not to smile at his antics, which included stunts like riding his push bike through Woolworths scattering bewildered shoppers in his wake. One story describes a motorist who had the misfortune of breaking down on Combaton Hill. He stood with his car bonnet raised, scratching his head, trying to discern the cause of his predicament. Johnny appeared from nowhere, pulled out all the plug leads and any other wires he could get his hands on, and then ambled off, leaving the perplexed motorist in a far worse situation. A young biker stood on Wood Street, his Yamaha 125 motorbike having broken down, and Johnny offered the confused youth the following advice. You needs to give him more A. On another occasion, a lady failed her driving test on account of Johnny laying down in front of her car, apparently playing dead. Whilst on their break, workers at Gilt Edge Carpets at the bottom of Mill Street would be in fits of laughter as they witnessed Johnny causing mayhem at a bed shop that used to be there. He would peek around the corner, waiting until the staff were all at the back of the shop, and then run in, bounce up and down on the beds until they chased him out. Then after waiting long enough for calm to be restored, he would do the same thing all over again. One lady who worked at Brinton's and used to spend her lunch hour wandering around the town centre recalls seeing Johnny on several occasions, either dressed in his sailor's suit or as Charlie Chaplin, swinging a cane and imitating Chaplin's signature walk. Her most unforgettable memory of Johnny, however, was when she encountered him on Worcester Street. As she approached, she could see a crowd gathering. Johnny was standing outside what is now the entrance to the Roland Hill Centre. He proclaimed, it's Her Majesty the Queen's birthday, and I want you all to sing Happy Birthday. So a little part of Kidderminster came to a halt, old and young alike, to sing Happy Birthday to the Queen with Johnny conducting. One chap broke down on Lion Street one evening, having run out of petrol. His friend tried to assist him by bringing a gallon can of petrol, but it didn't have the pouring spout with it, so when they tried to pour it, it just dribbled down the side of the car. Along comes Johnny. Great, that's all I need, he thought. But Johnny took a carrier bag from the back seat of the car, rolled it into a tube and poured the petrol through that. Not as daft as many people believed. There were a few tales of Johnny in local pubs. He would entertain the other punters by telling them stories and jokes, always making everyone laugh. Once he ran out of beer money, he would say, Right, I've got to go now as I can't afford another drink. I have got this bar of chocolate if anyone wants to buy it off me. It only has a couple of squares missing. He would then pull a bar of chocolate out of his pocket and place it on the bar. This would start an auction going. He never failed to get enough money for a couple more drinks. People would pay more than the chocolate was worth just to keep him in the pub that little bit longer. Johnny the Cobbler was born Philip John Heath in Tenbury on the 27th of October 1925, but the family always knew him as John. His mother was Edith Field and his father was Leonard Heath. Johnny was the eldest of three children. He had two brothers, Trevor and Eric. The family moved from Tenbury to Kidderminster in around 1936. At one time, Johnny worked as a cobbler at Edward's shoe shop in the Bull Ring. This is why he was known to people in Kidderminster as Johnny the Cobbler. John joined the Navy during the latter part of the Second World War. He served in the Fleet Air Arms as a radio controller and was stationed in Malta. One of the many misconceptions about John was that he suffered shell shock during the war. He didn't. While serving in Malta, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. 
Another misconception I've heard repeated several times is that John was decorated while serving in the Navy. He wasn't. Before joining the Navy, John lived with his gran, but sadly she passed away while he was serving in Malta. So on his return to England, he went to live in London with his aunt Alice for a while, before coming back to Kidderminster to live with his mom and two brothers. John was a very intelligent man, and in his early twenties he built his own television set from parts. He did have a girlfriend at one time, but he was never engaged, so rumours of a fiancé who died are also untrue. When he returned to Kidderminster, he was housebound for several years. Then one day, when an old Navy friend came to visit him, the friend brought some drink. This was the start of John becoming an alcoholic, and he began to leave the house to go to the local off-licence, Garlic's, which was near his home. In later years, he lived with his mother in Park Street, and at times had to go to hospital for electrical treatment. When his mum passed away in 1989, he continued to live in the house they shared until his death in August 1996. Life at home was often challenging for his family, particularly for his mother Edith. Schizophrenics often find it difficult to take care of themselves. They struggle to see the difference between what is real and what is not real, and sufferers often rely heavily on their families to take care of them. Alcohol gave John the confidence to go out and that's how he became the character that everyone remembers. I think the fact that Kidderminster people took Johnny the Cobbler to their heart says quite a lot about the character and spirit of the people in this town. John's life was rather sad, but he had a gift for making others smile. Johnny the Cobbler was different to most people, but despite this, just over a quarter of a century after he passed away, he is still fondly remembered by the people of Kidderminster. Music 